الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أحب تف الله كتنون on in the tenth hadith we reach the tenth hadith and this hadith is a very uh, beneficial hadith as with all a hadith but this hadith has uh, many benefits that we'll gain from this hadith and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with tawfiq عن جندب رضي الله تعالى عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول من سمع من سمع سمع الله به يوم القيامة قال ومن يشاقك من يشاقك يشكك الله عليه يوم القيامة فقالوا أوسينا فقال إن أول ما ينتن ينتن من الإنسان بطنه فمن استطاع أن لا يأكل إلا طيبا فليفعل ومن استطاع أن لا يحا ما يحال بينه وبين الجنة ملء كفه من دم من دم أهراق أهراقه فليفعل رواه بخاري in this hadith that was collected in Sahih Bukhari it was reported on the authority of Jundu radiallahu ta'ala that he heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying whoever does a good deed in order to show off Allah will expose him on the day of resurrection and whoever puts the people into difficulties Allah will put him into difficulties on the day of resurrection they said advise us he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the first part of the human body to putrefy is the abdomen. So whoever is able to eat nothing but good food, let him do so. And whoever does as much as he can so that nothing intervenes, intervenes between him and paradise by not shedding even a handful of blood, let him do so. Ru'ahu Bukhari. In this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this hadith has many, many benefits. And the Prophet Sallallahu began the hadith, whoever does a good deed in order to show off, Allah will expose him on the day of resurrection. This shows us the importance of not having riyah, not showing off. And we have to strive our utmost to not show off when we go to the masjid, when we pray, when we make dua, when we make umrah, when we uh, make jihad fi sabilillah. Whatever deed it is when we teach El. And there are so many ahadith and so many ayat will show us the importance of not showing off because showing off is the opposite of ikhlas. Ikhlas means that you do it sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُ اللَّهُ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ وَنَفَاهُ وَيُكِينُ الصَّلَاةُ وَيُتُوا الزَّدَاءُ وَذَلِكَ دِينُ الْقَيْمَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and they were not commanded except to worship Allah alone. That's sincerity. Sincerity, ikhlas is sincerity. That's the opposite of riyah, which is a type of minor shirk. And can also be a type of get to the level of major shirk. So showing off can be minor shirk and sometimes it can be major shirk if it means that you're doing the deed totally for the people. You begin to pray without any sincerity, totally to people, for the sake of people. You want the people to see you praying, that's the only reason. Then this could be, could, could lead to major shirk. So we have to be careful. Riyah attacks us all. And one of the great ulama before, I think it was Imam Malik or Imam Shafi, mentioned that he, he was having a dars, it was Imam Malik, because he was in the Haram, uh, in the Haram in, in Medina. And he was teaching in front of maybe hundreds or thousands of students. Thousands. And this was a great Imam, Imam Malik, Imam Dar al-Hijra, Malik bin Anas, uh, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. And he was teaching in front of thousands of people in, front, in the Haram. And he stopped. I don't know if it was after a question or it was just, he, he took a long time. And they said, oh, great, great Imam, you know, what's going on? You know, what, why, why aren't you either answering this question or why aren't you, uh, 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 you know, starting your lecture, your Mahabara? He said, you know, I was afraid, I, you know, I was trying to get my niyyah. 
purifying my meal. And he's a great imam. What about us? The Prophet sallallahu Anyway, there's a very long hadith. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned three people in this hadith. The first one was a mujahid who fought for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At least we thought this. And on the day of judgment, these are the first people, as is mentioned in this hadith, who are going to be raised on the day of judgment. The first people held to account, called to account for their deeds. And this one, he will be brought before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it will be asked, What did you do? And he'll see, I fought for your sake until I was martyred. And we know that that's one of the greatest deeds you can do in Islam, to be martyred for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning that you fought jihad fi sabilillah according to the Quran and the Sunnah, not according to ISIS, not according to Jamaat al Takfir wa Hijra, not according to Sayyid Qutub, not according to uh, Jamaat al Fulani uh, and this one and that one and the terrorists and, and the Irhab and Boko Haram and Ash Shabab. No. These people are some of the worst demons on the face of the earth. The worst demons. Them and Hezbollah. Hezbollah is a Shia group. And these people are supposed to be close to Ahl Sunnah. But they're far from Ahl Sunnah. They're from Ahl Bidah. Bida. They are the people the Prophet said, Al Khawarij Kilab al Nar. The Khawarij are the dogs of the hellfire. The Prophet talked about groups like ISIS or Daesh. And talked about groups like Jamaat al Tikfir wa Hitra. And talked about groups like Boko Haram. And talked about groups like uh, Shabab. A shabab and all these other deviant, wicked groups who steal people's blood, blow up themselves in malls. They kill people in malls. They kill the women and children in malls. They kill the women and the, the women and the, the other students in the universities. What is what kind of Islam? What kind of intellect is this? We don't find this. We only find the worst. Even the the devils who don't even believe in Allah. A lot of them have more sanctity for life than those people. Just recently they attacked, uh, today they killed 25 police officers in Yemen. Do they care anything about Yemen and, the, and, and Yemen becoming a country again and becoming uh, coming back to, to Islam and coming back to Khair and Ahl Sunnah? No, but they just kill and kill because they have a goal and they want to reach their goal through the blood of humanity. Wa'iyadu billah min barika. Going back to the point that when we do our deeds, whether it be jihad, whether it be praying, whether it be ilm, also the second person the Prophet mentioned in the, in the hadith was a person who had knowledge and perfected the Quran, he memorized the Quran, but he did it so the people would say he was a good reciter. And he did it because he wanted the people to say he was an alam. Then it was said about him. So he got his reward in this dunya, that it was said about him that he's an alam. Oh, he's a beautiful reciter. It was said about him. And then, in the hereafter, he was dragged on his face in the hellfire for the same righteous deed. Can you imagine doing the best deed that there is, and you're dragged in the hellfire? Why? For the niya. And that goes back to two conditions for our deeds to be accepted. Our niya, our sincerity, that it's for Allah. And the second one is that it's accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Because if it's not for Allah, no matter how great it may seem, Mother Teresa used to give a lot of sadaqa. Prince, we just found out, Prince used to give millions of dollars to children in Afghanistan. Michael Jackson, I'm sure, did some good deeds too. And many other people. But it won't benefit them on the Day of Judgment because their deeds will be like dust in the wind because they didn't have the condition of Islam. Of sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of doing those deeds to worship Allah alone. So then their deeds are like dust in the wind. So it goes back to the important point here of me mentioning and getting a little off track is to show the point that sincerity, and that was the first part of the hadith, the Prophet said, 
whoever does a good deed in order to show off, Allah will expose him of the erection. And that will happen to the one who was martyred and did it for the people. And that will happen to the one who was an alim but only did it for the people to show off. And that will happen to the one who had a lot of money and he spent it here and he spent it there and he spent it everywhere. But he did it so that the people would say he was a philanthropist or he was a, a, wealth, a, 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 a very extravagant spender. And that's what he got. The people, he got his reward from the people. But he won't, he'll get a punishment for Allah because he was forced to spend that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then in the second part of the hadith, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, uh, the Prophet wa ta'ala mentioned that Allah will expose him on the day of resurrection. And whoever puts the people into difficulties, Allah will put him into difficulties on the day of resurrection. So it's important. Be careful how you treat people. Of vul, vulamat yawm al That when you oppress people in this life, that in the hereafter, it will be darkness and it will be something that will come back to you, those sins. So we, we have to be kind and just to people. And we have to strive to take, make things easy for others, for your Muslim brothers and sisters or anyone. You'll be rewarded for that. If you do something, you know someone is having difficulty paying their rent. You know they're having difficulty raising some money for something. They're having difficulty, they need a loan. They need something. They need your phone, phone credit at the airport. They don't know anybody and they need to use a phone. If you make it easy for that believer or easy for that person, Allah will make it easy for you. So this that's the... That's the opposite. This hadith is showing us that we don't want to put people into difficulties. But also there's other hadith which show us that we want to make things easy for people. The Prophet ﷺ then was asked by the Sahaba, advise us, give us advice. Because that was the nature. The Prophet ﷺ was there to, 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 to give advice, to give the message of Allah, to give guidance to the people. To give people guidance from darkness to light. They want, and the Sahaba, that shows that they had hurts on an ilm. Hurts on talib al ilm. The Sahaba, they were vigilant in seeking knowledge. And they also, this is another point with regards to knowledge. Because a lot of us, we get caught up, we want to seek knowledge because we want to be a talib, we want to be known as a student of knowledge. MashaAllah, he's a talib al ilm. She's a talib al ilm. She went to this university. MashaAllah, she got a degree in this. But the Sahaba, they wanted Elm to come closer to Allah. Advise us. They had harsal al Elm, Elm al They had, uh, they strove to get beneficial knowledge. They strove to get beneficial knowledge. Knowledge that would help their hearts. Knowledge that would help them come closer to Allah. They didn't want knowledge because they wanted a whole bunch of books. They didn't want knowledge that, yeah, mashallah, see me, I have this kitab, or I, I, I can speak some Arabic, or I this, or that, or whatever. No. They, they did it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come closer to a wise and legit. So they asked for advice. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, the first part of the human body to putrefy is the abdomen. So whoever is able to eat nothing but good food, let him do so. That means eat the halal. In the law tayyib, la yaqbala illa tayyib. Allah only accepts good. And he only accepts that which is good, as is mentioned in the Quran, and the halal. So eat good, eat the good food, and earn from good sources, from halal sources. Stay away from muharramat. So whoever is able to eat nothing but good food, let him do so. And who, who does as much as he can, so that nothing intervenes between him and paradise, by not shedding even a handful of blood, let him do so. So that means don't oppress people. Because the dua of the oppressed... Uh, is answered, meaning if someone is oppressed, even if they're non-Muslim and they're oppressed by a Muslim, their dua, if they say, oh Allah, this Muslim is oppressing me, their dua is bila hijab. There's no hijab, there's no nothing between them and their dua. That means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept their dua. So we have to be careful. Someone, if they pray against you, oh, so-and-so did this bad thing to me. So-and-so cut me off one day. So-and-so cursed me. So-and-so stole my money. This life, as well as the hereafter, it can come back to you. So we have to be careful and watch uh, oppression. And what is one of the greatest ways of oppressing people is, of course, uh, through denying them to hate, but likewise, spreading blood, as the Prophet said. 
And this goes back to what we were saying in the beginning. Look at these groups, they claim Islam. How is it you say you're a Muslim and all you do, even if you are hitting your enemy, <clears throat> the only thing you do is bring harm to the believers. Today alone, this is between today, today, to this group, Daesh or ISIS, they attacked some Yemeni uh, police, killed 25, they just were signing up probably to get paychecks, they wanted to be police officers to help a Muslim country protect itself in the country, okay? Killed 25 of them. He blew himself up, so he killed himself and killed those people and innocent people around them. Another one, the same day in Iraq, he, he blew himself up, uh, where was it? I can't remember if it was the marketplace and how many people he killed, 20 people or something. Killed himself, so Yom Qiyama, he'll be killing himself over and over as the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, the one who commits suicide, what will happen to them. And likewise, he just killed whoever, he killed people they were watching a football in the, in the, in like a place probably where they smoke shesha or whatever, but they were in a place watching TV and he blew up and it shows a picture of the chair, it blew out the back. How much blood have these people spilled from Muslims and non-Muslims? They only bring blood. We don't see any good from that. We don't see any good from these people. What do you think they will get your work down? And their leader who calls to this, who recruits people from around the world to do this evil, to blow themselves up. What is this? To blow up women, to dress as women. These people here fighting uh, the government here, may Allah preserve it. They are wearing, some of them wear hijab. They wear niqab and everything. And they're men, just so they can get to a place and kill themselves and kill people. To blow up a masjid, to attack the government. Why he other than not? This is their mentality. They are by any means necessary. So they follow the sunnah of the communists and these other groups. But they don't follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because um, the means do not justify the ends in Islam. Meaning that you have to have a halal path to do something in order to get a halal end. You can't do something haram to get to the halal. And so this shows us the importance to that people's uh, especially the believer's blood is sacred. But humanity has a type of sanctity as well. That you can't kill and harm people unnecessarily and without the right to do so. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our many sins. The last, uh, so I want to mention these last benefits. Some of the benefits of this hadith. Uh, this hadith shows us the forbidden of performing good deeds in order to impress people. So to show off is haram. Number two. That to show off will be exposed by Allah the Almighty on the Day of Judgment. Number three, it also shows us the, the Yom al Qiyamah is coming closer. The Day of Judgment is coming closer. Number four, this hadith shows us the prohibition of uh, making things difficult to young people. That it's haram. It's not permissible to make things difficult on people. And also it shows us that people making difficult for others, uh, making difficulties for others will be punished on the Day of Judgment as well. Another benefit of this hadith is it shows us the importance of, do, of that we should increase our good deeds and we should eat only the halal food and that we should stay away from the muharramat and that it is uh, unlawful to shed blood of people and animals and trees and causing harm to the environment. So we have to be on istiqamah and be away from the people of shaitan, mu'amalat. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our benefit of our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself. And the shaitan was sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sallam.